Sydney markets, the largest in Australia, while the rest of us sleep, thousands of tonnes of fresh produce are being trucked into this largely nocturnal world. If you're eating fresh fruit and vegetables, the chances are it came through here. This is a big, big place. A world inhabited by more than 5,500 workers, where wholesalers and providors bargain over the very produce that eventually finds its way to our plate. We are so lucky to be able to come in here, into our supply chain, pick world-class produce and take it home and feed the nation. Tonight, lost in the markets. Alex, where are you? Drama in D shed. The electrician's on his way, don't worry. Look, look, look at me, more handsome. They've got to be sold, otherwise they're right now. And the fresh fellas take over paddies. Watch out for the empty box, don't fall down! So we're doing a whole day on the farm and then waking up 11.30 and coming in. And we meet two of the hardest working brothers in the markets. So come on and have a look. That's it. To operate in D-Shed, you have to be a local farmer from within the Sydney Basin. It's just after midnight, and the Grimer brothers, Sam and Steve, are bringing their farm fresh produce into the market. Quick coffee, and we're into it. Now we've got to get here early because um, we've got a lot of orders to make up. You get organised. If you're not organised, You'll be chasing your tail all morning. You will never keep up. So we've got to get here early, make up these orders and send them. The Grimers provide more produce than most local growers in this shed. Yeah, we grow the golden beetroots, coloured carrots, fresh garlic. Green garlic growing. So you use end to end. But we, we pick it like that because the restaurants want to use the leaves as well. You get all that for 10 bucks. The growers jargon is lines, each line representing a different fruit or vegetable. 30 lines, 30, 35 lines. That's a lot. Some growers are doing three, four lines. Bigger quantity, we do a bit less and more variety. They're quite rubby. Getting very popular, aren't you? They're an old, old uh, veggie. But a lot of restaurants are starting to use them now. I thought they'd die out, the honest route, but uh, it sort of made a revival. So we've got the silver beet here. We've got the Tuscan cabbage under there. Beetroots, chicory, endive, everything. Uh, we've got green kale and uh, red kale, the purple kale. People are preferring that over the silver beet, but that's the health food now. We're slacking off a bit on the silver beet and growing more kale. Picked yesterday, sold the next day, within a day. Another young bloke started looking after Daniel's son Sam is following in his muddy boots. A third generation grinder, and he's running a little late. Yeah, we don't he likes his beauty sleep. <laughs> Peter, we have to push today on the stuff. Very quiet. Everyone's got plenty of stuff. It looks like today is one day when selling might be easier said than done. We sort of get on the phone and um, push the stock a bit, that's all. Memo. I know, but there's no orders today. We take home stock, we make no money. <laughs> we eat well. Chef Attila Yelmaz from Bazaar Food Collective is on the lookout for his client. Just waiting for Alex from, from Secret Foodies to uh, rock up, but I think she's running a little bit late. We make a move. I think uh, Alex is going to have to try and find us in the markets, mate, because we're going to make a start. Hello, Alex. Hey, I'm at Champs. Where are you? I'm down in the markets in D Shed. Yeah, I'll meet you there. Okay, I'll see you soon. All right. So I'm Miss D. Alex Adams and I'm the founder and creator of Secret Foodies. Secret Foodies is a secret dining experience. Basically people buy a ticket to a themed dinner, they don't know where they're going or who they're going to meet. 
and they get a text message on the day revealing the location just two hours before. It's all about meeting new people, trying new places, discovering new food. Tonight's Secret Foodies event is uh, it's uh, the Turkish Bazaar. So we're doing a full Turkish menu for, uh, for Alex and, and her guests. Attila! I've never trained as a chef. I, I cooked alongside with my father, but at 25 I joined the police. Unfortunately, when I was injured in the police and couldn't, couldn't do that, uh, the job that I, I passionately loved anymore, I, I had to go into do something else, and so I chose food. You know, Attila and I have kind of bounced around a few ideas about what we're going to do for the menu tonight. We've kind of got an idea, but it's really produce driven. If we can't find the things that we want, the produce that we need for the menu, uh, we're going to have to make some tweaks. So I hope we haven't got here too late, or I haven't got here too late. Hey, do you know Attila? You went that way? Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, I'm going to have to give him another call. D shed's pretty big, a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Hey, I'm down near the eggplants. All right, she's a funny girl, mate. She keeps saying, I'm near the eggplants, but there's eggplants everywhere, so I just got to try and find her. It's a nice place around here. Lots of good produce. It's amazing. It was secret foodies tonight, but right now it feels more like secret hiding chef. Where are you, Attila? The markets are huge, and by this time of day, full of customers. Even the massive D shed can't fit all 400 growers inside. There's an overflow with stalls spilling out onto the pavement. Number one, that one, number one. Very nice. <laughs> and as you'd expect in a multicultural melting pot, exotic varieties abound, like lotus root. Tastes sort of like a potato, a nice, very crunchy potato. It, it, what you do is uh, you cut off the skin, uh, you chop it up to slices, you boil it for about an hour, about maybe two, depending on uh, how crunchy you like it. And what's the worst thing that could happen in a nocturnal city? No one wants to be working in the dark. Oh, we just lost the lights. The lights have gone off, so we're just trying to work out how to fix them. How long before the lights come back? The electrician's on his way, yeah. no worries. No, he's all right. He, you know, got a wheel and deal and make a sale. Attila! <laughs> Alex, where are you? I start seeing about half past nine. Start working with Joe, start loading your trucks, so get this stuff out of here, okay? A blackout has plunged part of the Sydney markets into darkness. And the uh, 10 dozen coriander. Yep. But the yep. marketeers are a resident lot. Even in the dark, you can see. Oh, the, the, the light's gone off. It's very hard to sell out here, like being on the outside of the market, not, not so much in, inside in the light. I think it's just to be fine. I can see the stuff. Vessels. Schlott, everything. No one's really uh, worried about a couple of people are, but I don't know, it's, uh, they're pretty good, yeah? Look, look, look at me, more handsome. As the night turns to day, d shed starts to get back to normal. You know I love you, but it's not, I'm not trying to rip you off, I promise. I don't charge you more than I charge other customers. No, he's all right. He, you know, got a wheel and deal and make a sale. This size, I've been selling on 40. This isn't a supermarket where you can store your produce for weeks on end. In d shit, you have to sell it fresh or not sell it at all. Things that uh, we've got plenty of, we just give it a bit of a push. I'll send you a finish, finish today. You just keep watching, keep looking. It's not easy, but yeah, your eyes got to be everywhere. That's the thing of this game, you can't, it's up, up and down. It's a, it's a big roller coaster sometimes. <laughs> Sam and Steve are second generation D shedders. The main customers are providors, chefs, and greengrocers. Their father, Joseph, started the farm back in the 60s. It's grown from 10 acres to 40. I take a lot of pride in what we've built, you know, and I'm sure the old man will be proud of us, you know. Um, 
It's all emotional for us, you know, because um, he died young, you know, and and I think, you know, he'd be proud of us. It's a shame, you know, he, he couldn't see what we sort of built. And as it's grown, the brothers have never forgotten where they started, That's nor the right, legacy yeah. they build for the next generation. We've got a lot of pride in our stuff and all that, especially seeing it from so, so high and then picking it. Too hard to let go of it. We can't go forever. The, the legs and the knees are wearing out. Too much standing on this concrete. Back. Never stops. Still selling now. Paris Farms all done. 12 pallets. Oh, you want eight baby bedroom as well? So you want these corn? Spring onions, 20. They're all coming now. Look at them. Look, the market's filling up. And they all sort of hit you once and the phone's ringing. And... It's getting good. Look, it's stock's going down. It's looking good. So after a slow start, it's been another good day for the brothers. Dad would be proud. Hello! Good, have you seen Attila? Yeah, he went that way. That way? Yeah. Okay, nice kale, thanks. As for Alex, she's still short one chef. Attila! Alex, where are you? Under the clock. Just wait there. Yeah. Don't move. Okay, Stay okay. where you are. Nice All right. Yeah, I can see you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh. I love you left me. <laughs> where have you been? I mean, looking at me everywhere. <laughs> it's like five minutes late. This place is amazing. It's pretty big, the isn't it? The produce is insane. I know. And this is only part of it. We've got to do a whole lap to get all our produce. So. All right, well, let's start shopping. Let's go. Alex and her chef Attila are on a mission to find all of the produce for tonight's secret foodies event. And how do you work out like who has the best? You know, does it change or do you pick your kind of favourite suppliers? Well, I, I've now got favourite suppliers and I know that I consistently get good produce from them so I tend to, to, to go to those. But it's just a matter of looking around, you know, touching and feeling and, 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 and getting your hands into it. And they don't mind, I mean, you can ask them. Oh, this is Jerusalem artichoke. Jerusalem artichoke. Ah, it looks like ginger. Yeah, it does look like ginger. Yeah. So we're going to do the roasted beetroot dip tonight. Yep. We go through a fair bit of beetroot for a dip, so I'll take I'll take a box. Mate, with the herbs, they sell everything here in either individual bunch or you get it in a market bunch. Yeah. Market bunch is six to a bunch. You get lots of chefs coming here. Yeah, a lot of chefs. Um, if not chefs, a lot of providors. These are fruit shops, anything. But... And when do you sleep? Any chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so, we're going to do tonight this, um, this eggplant dish, and it's called Karni Yaruk, which the literal translation is <laughs> wounded belly in Turkish. So, it's an eggplant, we fry it, and we cut it down the centre, and we open it up like split its guts, and we stuff it with spiced lamb, with uh, currants, pine nuts, herbs, a little bit of chilli. And then we bake that off again, and then we serve that up. So, yeah. How do you say it again? Karne yaruk. Wounded stomach. <laughs> so how can you tell a good eggplant? Well, I look for the green, but I don't know, what do you look for? Now, if it's, if it's black, like, more than the darker it is, like black, it's better, and if it's like the purpley, if they're purpley and hard, then yeah. they're good. And I also heard a tip a long time ago that if they're green here, there's less, less seeds in them, apparently. It's worked all right for me so far. Yeah? Yeah. We'll go over to Sea Shed now. We need to go see uh, Wing Brothers. They've normally got the best jalapenos. They're a really good size. So we split yeah. them open, we can open them up and stuff them. When I was a kid, my dad used to make sandwiches out of these for me and put garlic yogurt sauce on it and send me to school with it. <laughs> yeah, and all I wanted was Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's kick out of here. Right. And get some breakfast and get some coffee. Come Thanks for showing me around. There's no coffee break for the fresh fellas, Heath and Sean McInerney. They're getting ready to invade D Shed. Rock like there. On top of that one there, please. On Fridays, they change from wholesalers to retail by setting up a stall in D Shed, which itself transforms every weekend from growers' market to the world famous Paddy's market. They've got to be sold, otherwise they're right now. 
It's go, go, go. Barbara, whoa! Oh. All right, how's it going? You on top of it? Yeah, mate, I'm doing it now. What have we got coming over? Top okay, first leg, first leg. Those two there, they're going to go. Yep. Those two pallets from Britain, or they're going to go. Yep. Paddies. You got that blue box and the wind books. Mina rings, that's the, that's the bench line by the kilo. You got raspberries and blueberries here? Yep. Strawberries here yet? Strawberries here. All right, I'll let you know if there's anything else. All right, no worries. Cheers. All right, hurry up. All right, I'm going. Looks like there's too much work here for me. We've got to change hats. Wholesale and retail, changing hats now. Now we're looking after the mums and dads of the world and give them some good food at a real good price. Start working with Joe. Start loading your trucks and get this stuff out of here, okay? Gold kiwi fruit. Did I mention that? Ah. Come across golden kiwi fruit. Ride past and tell them to deliver it, will ya? We've got to be there, over there. They start setting up about half past nine. The public start coming about quarter to ten, ten o'clock. We'll give those customers a bit of quality and a little bit of value. If I'm not set up ready to trade, they're going to buy their gear off somebody else. So I'm going to miss out on sales and miss out on money. I tell you, this brother of mine, he's gone nuts. We've got far too much stock here. And I'm about to send out the secret text message. All right, done. So the Grimer brothers depart D shed, ready for yet another hard day's work on the farm. While Sean and Heath are rushing to fill up their spot and get ready before the public arrive. I tell you, this brother of mine, he's gone nuts. We got far too much stock here. We must be going to be giving stuff away this weekend. He always thinks I got too much, but we always sell it. Fresh fruit and vegetables, you can't go wrong with fresh fruit and veggies. You gotta love it. Look at that. Watch out for the empty box, don't fall down! Charlie, one more papaya, please. See if you can find me pretty one, colour. That one there, you got your hands on. That one, I oh, know it's good already. All the ladies here shopping, they want to see the pretty one, Charlie, like you. Well, Charlie's definitely the oldest employer I've got. Got more experience than everybody here put together. I wouldn't mind hiring a few more like him. Hey! On the cellar, don't throw them away! Come on, hot shot, where you been, pal? Yeah, Jordan, come on, buddy. Before my hair grows back, mate. Before my hair grows back. Had to move the box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted a story on Jordan Library, Jordan. Sean is pumped up like a kelpie on caffeine. Heath isn't far behind him. Public, you're all coming in now. We're good sitting up. $18 a box, honey. Oh, how about I pick one for you? Beautiful. You trust me. This is my first wife set. Thank you. Hey! Here, oh, I, uh, I scare you. Sorry, darling. Hey, I've got a big pair here for two dollars. Hey, have a look here, yeah, beautiful big pair. I've got a beautiful big pair. Who's got a big pair? Where? You got a big pair? No, I don't think so. It doesn't get any better. Look at Over that. the next three days, the brothers will move ten ton of produce as a hundred thousand people pass their stand. Oh, this morning in the Sydney markets and sold here at Paddy's hey, today. Hey, have a look here. Yeah, we got the best here. Mina in Mina in Hello, darling. Everything all right there? What about you, handsome? You try one. This one, like me, very sweet. How was that, darling? Nothing but the best. How good's that one, brother? Good? Hello. Good? The best, huh? $18, sir. $18. You want to try? Try me for your mind now. We got the best here. And you've mentioned a discount. Yeah, have mentioned a discount, absolutely. Just show me your card, brother. I'm struggling. Uh -huh. Me too. Fresh mandarins. Buy up. It's easy to sell. It's easy to be convincing when you love the product. Top yeah. quality fruit and vegetables, and I love taking your money. Get in here, right, spend some money here, mate. All right, you did. Spend some money. You're good, eh? I can't believe the price. I can't believe the quality. Hey, you have up here. Oh, we'll be here at about five, five o'clock this afternoon. That's when we'll pack it up and go home. And back here again tomorrow at two o'clock again, doing the same thing all over again. Hey, uh, right here at Patty's. Hey, that's where you get it now. Sweet men are in vibe. Hey, good chestnut, great vibe. Hey, nothing but the best here. Ah! Later that day, Chef Attila Yilmaz is turning this morning's fresh produce into a feast for 50 hungry secret foodie. Um, I'm knackered, just trying to find Alex in, the, in that massive place with all those porkers running around. It's pretty stressful at the moment. Hey! Hi! You look like you're really busy. Flat out, I'm trying to catch up. Good, it smells amazing in here. Thanks, yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a good night. 
It's nice and warm. Yeah, it's so hot. Jump around here. <laughs> all right, okay, all right, I'll leave you. I'll see all right, you cool. Alex is going to let the secret out about where the dinner will be eaten. This is the moment that people have been waiting for. They bought their tickets completely unaware of where they're going and I'm about to send out the secret text message. All right, done. Can you see Table 10's got one here on their table already? I've worked with Attila for a couple of years now when he had his food truck. Hi mate, how are you? And I knew then and there that this guy knew his food. I don't think it, many people have come to Canterbury before. Do you have a secret foodie? Hey, I'm Alex. Sit wherever you like. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Great food, great wine, but it all kind of comes back to the produce and you know, without having that fresh, amazing seasonal produce, you don't have a fantastic meal and you don't have a great secret foodies event. Well, that's it, mate. That's the last one. Secret foodies is done. They're dusted. They look, look pretty happy, look pretty full. Uh, by far our biggest night ever. I'm knackered. It's been a long, tiring day for Alex and Attila, but a rewarding one. And they've given the secret foodies a unique and incredibly tasty dining experience. This is a good cauliflower. And what to look for? Nice, bright, white heads. Nice and bright, no browning. Tightly packed. That's what you look for in a good cauliflower. Fresh green, fresh green leaves around the outside. That thing is so fresh. That's still alive. I can hear a pulse. It's breathing. It's still alive. Look how fresh that is. It doesn't get any better than that. Beautiful cauliflowers.